What's up, everyone? It is Dr. Charlie, PT. Wanted to shoot a video today to share with you some tips for sleeping if you have piriformis syndrome. Um, and instead of sort of telling you what you should do or you shouldn't do or the best stretches for this or that, which is sort of general you know, advice or recommendations, um, there's plenty of other YouTube videos that do that. I'm sure you've probably seen them. Uh, I'm going to go deeper and I'm going to sort of pull away another layer of the onion to speak. Uh, and I'm going to help you really understand why sleeping hurts. So before you just start trying random things, um, you want to sort of have, have a foundational understanding of what's going on and again, why you hurt. And if you don't have sort of some logic or decision-making process that drives what you're doing, then you will just end up with a closet full of pillows and gadgets and things like that, because those things will not work. And you'll be frustrated and always wonder why you can't get relief. And the truth is, is that because you're not sure what to do and you haven't made the connection and sort of uh, you don't have the foundational understanding of why you hurt and what you're dealing with you will do random things because you want so badly to get better but they will not work and you will end up again frustrated so random inputs equal random results all right so um, in this video specifically we're going to talk about how to tweak sleeping positions to find more comfort. Uh, do keep in mind though, that there are many things that contribute to getting a good night's sleep. So sleep position is just one of the variables or things you're going to want to consider. Um, other things to consider would be nighttime routine, what you do before you go to bed, um, the sleeping surface, so mattress, things like that, as well as a whole host of other factors that we're not going to dive into in this video. Um, but instead, we're going to, again, focus on sleep position. So let's dive right into it. By the way, the purpose of this video is not to help you diagnose whether you have piriformis syndrome or not. I've created a ton of other content. You can check that out uh, if you'd like. Um, the other thing that I would highly recommend is you check out and uh, grab a free copy of my DIY diagnostic guide. It's called a better than an MRI diagnostic guide. I truly believe that because an image is just a still picture. It does not take into account your story, your movement exam, as well as a whole host of other factors that play into figuring out what could be going on. So you can grab that. Here, I'll include it above as well as below this video. All right, so let's chat about some positional tweaks for sleeping with piriformis syndrome and help you really understand why you're having trouble sleeping. In this video, we are going to cover how to connect the dots between why you hurt and the way you sleep via a process um, called Morphing Motions. My wife, Heather, actually created that name. It's an awesome name, and we will dive more into that. It's super important to help you understand why you hurt. Uh, we will also share some positional body tweaks to lessen the pain that you feel in your piriformis and or sciatica, they're often related. And we will share with you, be sure to stick around to the end, a few outside the box sort of changes or tweaks that my patients actually came up with given understanding the process of morphing motions and just having a system for solving this problem. So um, what's so cool is that once you learn basic concepts, um, then you can begin to find your own solutions. So many people with piriformis syndrome try changing how they sleep randomly without understanding why sleeping is a problem to begin with. And so they buy a new mattress, all types of different pillows and other stuff to try to improve their sleep. But it really just comes down to this. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And that's totally okay. But I want to teach you in this lesson, something that will hopefully open your eyes, create an aha moment and help put some of the pieces together so you don't feel so lost uh, and give you some clarity as well as some strategies at the end of this lesson for improving sleep. So if sleeping is a problem for my clients and or it's a problem for you as you're watching this, improving it should be your first priority. Because if you haven't realized it yet, sleep is kind of a big deal. And it's pretty clear that people who sleep less actually hurt more and generally are just less healthy. So this is why focusing on improving your sleep is vital for recovery and again, should be the first thing that you do. Now, keep in mind that tweaking your sleep position is just one of the variables involved with the big picture of other things that you should consider when optimizing your sleep. Again, things that you're doing before sleep, the overall uh, kind of environment that you're sleeping in and things like that. So let's dive into it. Remember a moment ago, I said this, sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. So let me teach you a concept that I think might help you understand why you hurt. It's called morphing motions. So morphing motions is the process through which you discover how your yucky motions are showing up in life, in this case, while you sleep. It helps reveal your blind spots and see the world in a new way so that you can begin to know what you don't know. It essentially helps you pull back the curtain on things that you weren't aware of before. So here's what I mean. 
For folks with piriformis syndrome, one of the most painful, yucky motions is the figure four. And if you're not sure what that is, here it is. There's a top view in the middle there, but on the right and on the left, this is kind of what it looks like. So if you haven't tried this yet, go ahead and give it a try. And you're just trying to see how does it feel. If you have piriformis syndrome or sciatica, a lot of times this is pretty yucky. Keep in mind, it can also be yucky with other problems like hip problems and back problems and things like that. So it's not specific to just that, but this is often a painful position. And it's called figure four because it creates the number four when you look from above. And there it is. It generally feels stiff, achy, painful, and just plain old yucky. And again, it makes sense because it stretches or pulls on the piriformis muscle. Again, it also pulls on a whole host of other things, the hip joint, the other buttock muscles, uh, the nerve in the back of the leg, sciatic nerve, uh, all types of stuff. So not specific necessarily just to piriformis, but it's often a yucky motion. And it will be for you if you have piriformis problems. Knowing that this motion is yucky is super important and highly valuable because the answer to this next question could set you free. So I need you to ask yourself this. How is my yucky figure four, that motion that we just showed you, showing up in my sleep? So let's morph the figure four. Let's go through the process of morphing motion, show you what it is, and reveal to you how it could be showing up while you're sleeping. So this is how I sleep. So I'm on my back or I'm on my belly. And notice I have that sort of frog leg position. And that's a figure four. And on my belly, that's also a figure four. Flip it around your brain, obviously. But same idea, same position. If I'm laying on my side, and I have my leg hiked up. That's also a figure four. And here it is again. If you're laying on your back and your trunk is twisted, that puts strain through the buttock and puts you in a relative figure four. A little bit more clear, your leg, again, you're on your side, is pulled up, figure four. Figure four on the top leg, figure four on the bottom leg. And here's sort of a stretched out version of the figure four, right? So kind of pull that, that number four, hopefully you can see it. And this position, while it's not an extreme figure four motion, it is, you can see kind of pushing you towards that yucky motion. It's moving you closer towards a yucky figure four. And hopefully you can see that the figure four motion shows up in nearly every position of sleeping, whether you're on your back, your belly, your side sleeping, there's only so many ways you can sleep and it's hard to get away from this yucky motion. And if you're not mindful of how you sleep, you could unknowingly be placing your body in a yucky position as you sleep. And you could be doing this for hours, right? So this simple exercise or process of morphing motion should get your wheels turning and kickstart your mind into detective mode. You should begin thinking like, and having aha moments and trying to figure out, right, how your yucky motions or how this motion specifically is showing up, not only in sleep, but other areas, right? So you want to continue to ask yourself, where else are my yucky motions? Maybe it's something other than the figure four showing up in life. And how can I begin tweaking these things for comfort? That's what should pop into your brain. And the answer to that can be super valuable. So the first step to healing is by doing what I call healing by subtraction, essentially learning how to optimize your mind and body for healing. And if you're not familiar with sort of the phases or the process of healing and the exact structure that I walk people through um, in one of my private coaching programs, the Glute Relief Accelerator Program, then I would recommend um, that you check out my free workshop where I walk through um, all the steps and the exact process that I use with my private clients. And you can check that out. I'll put a link here and or I'll put it below this video. So here are a few outside the box strategies. Again, my clients have used or even developed on their own to help reduce the frequency of this yucky figure four motion as they sleep. So you've got a yucky figure four. How is this showing up? Ooh, I'm doing this when I sleep, right? And here are some solutions. So a very common solution is pillow propping. I guarantee you've tried maybe this or some other things, but I want to put a little bit of a spin on it and help you understand why this is maybe something you want to try or maybe why it doesn't make sense. So I just took these pictures off Amazon. Hopefully I can use them, but you can see that the most common type of sort of pillow propping technique would be, hey, I put a pillow between my knees. Most people with these problems have tried this. You can see that the support is at the level of the knee. So it kind of keeps your legs from falling across the body. I love it. Great. Give it a try if you haven't. But that being said, be mindful of, we just talked about morphing motions. There's no support at the ankle. So as you jack up the support in between the thighs and you have nothing at the ankles, your leg falls because of gravity and it shifts you more towards this figure four position. So if you're wondering, hey, why isn't this working? 
you might want to consider doing what Tracy did, right? So, hey, Charlie, uh, she is a private member of my coaching program. She said, I was able to lay on my left side last night with using a pillow between my knees, which didn't work for her. Um, but then she added one. She put one between her knees and her feet, and it, uh, it was really uh, helpful for her. So um, that's Tracy. Another thing that uh, somebody sort of invented in the program and I never really would have thought of um, is this idea of using a weighted blanket or a sleeping bag to sort of restrict your motion, right? Because when you're sleeping, you're not really aware of what you're doing. So um, generally, I recommend that, that of the variables um, that people sort of test and tweak to try to improve their sleep, um, position is one of the last ones because it's just so hard to do. Oftentimes you position yourself in a certain way and then you wake up and your pillow is across the room, right? But a weighted blanket or sleeping bag might actually change that for you. And Christina, a woman in the program who's been suffering with some chronic back and other problems, um, posted this in the private healing community uh, within the private coaching program. She said, one weekend and I have a wind to, chair, wind to share. After watching Dr. Charlie's content, I realized one of my yucky motions was twisting and I was twisting my body while sleeping. So her figure four maybe wasn't too yucky, but her twist was, and she did the same thing. So my boys had bought me a weighted blanket a few years ago, but I never got to use it. I decided to try using it again to prevent me from moving my legs while sleep, sleeping and um, boy, did it ever. So if I try to move, uh, I wake up enough to stop the motion and settle back to sleep. After only a few nights, today was the first time in many years I woke up with no back pain. Hope this might be useful for other members of the group, right? So if you twist your trunk, it kind of puts your top leg in a position of a figure four, as well as your bottom leg, I guess, too. Um, but the point is she took this idea of morphing motions, you know, and found some yucky motions, and then asked herself, how is this showing my life specifically as it related to sleep? She was having trouble with that. So way to go, Christina. Another quick story. Bill had pain. He was another client of mine in his right buttock, mostly while sleeping for two years. He had tried many different therapies, uh, chiropractic, and even an injection in his buttock. And the next step was to consider or look into surgery. He was obviously, like most of you may be watching this, was trying to prevent that and go the most natural route possible. So he reached out to me and luckily we were able to help him out. That being said, he slept like this, right? And one of his yucky motions was a figure four and a leg raise and a trunk twist and things like this. And you can imagine that, again, there's that figure four motion. There's that tension through that area. And this is how he slept, right? So his trunk was twisted to the right relative to his body. And his right leg was in a figure four leg raisey type position sprawled across his body. This placed his right hip, leg, and buttock in a stretched position for hours at night. And he's kind of knocked out and he's just laying like that. And what this does, is it reduces blood supply to the stretched tissue and therefore cuts off oxygen to the muscles and to the nerves in that area, sciatic nerve, as he slept. So Bill slept like this out of habit after he had developed left shoulder pain years prior and could no longer sleep directly on his left side. So he twisted his body to get away from the left shoulder pain. And knowing this, we hypothesized that if we could drastically change his sleeping position, we could take away his pain because he was placing himself in these yucky positions, yucky motions, right? So using some different strategies and blocking him in, right, pushing his bed up against the wall, using some different solid pillow propping techniques, things like that, um, you know, so that he couldn't twist uh, and, mod and he could kind of tweak his sleep. Uh, and one week into the program, he shot me this email. Good news, the biggie, sleep position. I did my best to sleep either on my back or on my side in an untwisted position, shoulder on the mattress, not on my back with hips turned and left leg stretched out. Uh, stretching out the butt muscles. Good news. I did not get up once in four nights uh, to self-massage. I could feel it at times, but it would go away or at least allow me to sleep. And that was after a punishing mountain bike ride over Blue Mountains, an area in southeastern Pennsylvania. Um, and that was Friday. Then he helped his son work on his house Saturday and then switched a gas dryer over to propane on Sunday. He did a bunch of stuff. My long-winded point, he says, is I was active as ever, but slept through the night, my friend. Your thoughts and thanks. So pretty cool, right? So Bill did not need motion. We could have gotten fancy and tried all these different things, but really what Bill needed was detective work. So understand that less is more. And just a final thought, notice that I never said, this is how you should or shouldn't sleep, or there's a right or wrong way to sleep. This simply just isn't true. The goal is really just to find comfort, right? And begin connecting the dots between how you're moving or how you're positioning yourself and the sensations that you're experiencing as you sleep. So essentially be a detective and use that data, use what you learn to tweak the way you sleep to find comfort and learn what works for you. So hopefully this helps. That is all for now. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead, comment below, smash the like button. Also subscribe for more like videos and check out um, the links in the content that I have 
below if you'd like to connect with me. Thanks so much. Until next time, everyone, chat soon and take care.